I would like to introduce you to one of the elders of Progressive Assembly. He would not take to that title. He would tell you he is unworthy. And he would tell you that he's only a sinner saved by grace, seeking to help his Lord his work, and the Lord's people. And that's just what he is doing. He has only one arm, the left arm. And he has many scars all over his face. In fact, all over his body. Why? What happened? Well, We'll endeavor to tell you. I cannot remember his name. I blame that on old age. But I think we'll just know him as left armed Samson for the moment. Now, left armed son Samson was caught in a feud, a family feud. They have quite a few of those feuds down there yet in different parts of the country. You know what that means? Families are divided for some reason or other. <clears throat> and they're working against each other in every way. And once in a while, they make a raid upon each other. And of course, they take their machetes along with them. And therefore, there's some bloodshed. And many times, lives taken. <coughs> now, in this family of left arm Samson, the feud had been going on for many, many years. They had already lost lots of their family on both sides. On this special occasion, why the other side of the family came suddenly upon left arm Samson's family. And there was a slaughter. If I remember right, two brothers were killed outright, and the father too. Left arm Samson was also very badly wounded, cut up by the machetes. One arm was cut off all together. He had many wounds on his legs and body and face. However, he must have been a rather strong young man. He was young at the time. And he survived. Now, I can't tell you altogether how he survived. But down there, the people do not know what shock is. They're not like us. If we were wounded, we would die of shock. But they don't. They are very weak in illness in disease, and to die very quickly and suddenly if they have a disease. But if they're wounded by machete or shot, somehow they seem to have lots of resisting power. Anyhow, that's what left arm Samson had. 
Somehow he got the blood stopped. Somehow he got to a place of shelter. Somehow those wounds healed. They healed so much that he recovered his strength again. And of course he now knew what he had to do. There was only two of the opposite family left. <coughs> now it was his duty to avenge his own family. So that's what he started to do. With only one arm. And not the left one. So he went down, left his village, went down to the coast. Found a job with a fruit company using the machete. And there he practiced for two years. Practiced cutting all kinds of material. Not only the bananas, but the grass and trees, and even would practice after work until he got good strength in that left arm. He had wonderful strength in it. So he thought it was time to go and look these two men up. It took him some time to find out where these two brothers were. Then when he did, it came rather quickly, very suddenly, unexpectedly. He was walking along the narrow path when suddenly who should turn the corner but these two brothers. Well, he got quite a fright. He wasn't expecting that. And the two brothers, I don't think they realized who they were facing at the first. Well, he had only one arm and the left arm at that to face them. But he had the advantage that they did not have. He had spent some time getting his machete in good shape knowing what faced them. So, there there were two against one. He didn't know what to do at the first. He didn't expect to take two on at the one time. But how could he let that opportunity pass? So he started in. And what a fight that was. Blow after blow, and he had to exercise himself quite a lot in turning around from one to the other. But however, one went down, and then he went right up to the other one until he went down too. He made sure that they were both dead really dead, because you remember that they thought they had left him dead, but he wasn't. So he revived himself, so now here he was, he had avenged his family. Now all the opposite family had gone, now there was none but himself. So. He returned back down to the coast, and uh, this time he went to another part of the banana plantation, <coughs> and he found work in another farm. 
But this farm was a little different than the other one he had been to. Yes, there were some Christians in this farm. And of course, they were very active. Out they would go at night with their lantern, with their coalman lamp, and start in and preach the gospel. Now that was something, uh, something very new for left-armed Samson. So he listened to the gospel, and he came night after night, and his sins began to trouble him. And he heard the message of God's word. God loves the sinner, but hates the sin. So those dear men in the camp, they kept at the preaching. And poor left arm Samson was in distress. He knew he was a sinner. And to make a longer story short, what happened? Yes, he took his place as a sinner and received Christ as his Savior. Thank the Lord for that. So there he was now, a new man in Christ Jesus. Yes, left arm Samson was indeed a new creature in Christ Jesus. Like the Philippine jailer, <coughs> he would have liked to have washed the wounds that he inflicted upon those two men. But that was an impossibility. They were gone, already buried. And somehow that kept poor, this poor man in agony. After God saved him, well, it seems that it was then that he realized the depth of sin that he had been in. And that disturbed him very much. He could have no peace of mind. He couldn't settle down to anything. He wanted to be of a help. But these thoughts would fill his mind and his heart. <coughs> he spoke to the other Christians in the camp about this. And he came to the conclusion at the last that the only way that he could find relief was turn himself in, confessing what he had done to the, these two men. So it was decided that that's what he should do. <coughs> so he left the camp, went back to the village up in the mountains. And there he lost no time in looking up the authorities and standing before them, telling them what he had done. Well, I don't know. It appears that they looked upon him as some man that was a little bit touched in the head. They had never met with one like that before. They would come in and tell them that they had killed two men and wanted to be punished for it. So, looked up the books, the criminal books that they had in the office, asked them what year, asked them what month, and he told them. So they looked up that year and that month, but his name wasn't there. 
saluted the months before and the months afterwards. But no, nothing could be found. They looked through the whole criminal book for that year, but nothing showed up. Then they thought perhaps they had mistaken the date of the year. So they looked at the year before that. And then they looked at the year after that. But nothing could be found against this dear man. Then they looked up the year before that again. And the year after that again. Just to make sure. No. His name wasn't there. He had committed no crime. They came to the conclusion that uh, he had, instead of coming to see them, he should have gone to have seen a doctor. That was their conclusion. So at last they said, no, there's nothing against you. But still he stood there. And uh, they wondered what kind of a man he was. So they said at last, look here, there's nothing against you. You're a free man. Go back home. Go to the place that you came from and start and work as you ought to do. Well, at last it sunk in. They had nothing against him. He came, he tried, but now he found out in the eyes of the law of the land, he was a free man. They had nothing against him. <coughs> now, I can't explain everything, but knowing the country as I do, and having a revolution between the time that he killed these two men and the time that he reported, I expect that there was some, well, something more important for the authorities to do than to look after a man that only killed two men. However, back he went to the coast, and they, they were waiting for him, the Christians were, they had been praying while he was away, and that uh, satisfied them, and it seemed to satisfy him too. Now his conscience was clear, he did his best, he did all that was in his power to confess to the authorities what he had done. But they had sent them away a free man. So there he was. So now he was at liberty to do what he wanted to do. Now there was nothing troubling him. He did all he could, what more could be done. He was a free man, God had forgiven him his sins, and as far as the country was concerned, they had nothing against him. So, left arm Samson began to help the dear Christian men who were there proclaim the good news of salvation in the camp in which he lived and in other camps around. He grew in grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he was very good at conferences. He was a, a popular gospel preacher, and having the experience that he had, he knew how to deal with the people, and he knew how to speak and talk to them in a very plain, frank language. And God used them. Now he's getting older now, and I think he's settled down in the town of Progresso. And there he's one of the principal men today in the assembly. So there you have it. Not only the saving grace of God, but also the keeping grace of God in the lives of some of those dear people down there.